know, it's just this dude was already the type of player I was. Uh, it was always just giving, just giving 100 percent effort, and that's all he preached: just run to the ball. Uh, you can't mess up. You can't mess up if you're just straining. And so, just buying in and just run to the ball, it just make the game fun. Was Chance Sylvie, who might be looking at playing a little bit of nickel this year with the injury to Trey Norwood which Lincoln Riley confirmed last Friday. He's out for the season with what he's calling a lower leg injury, which makes you thinner in a defensive backfield for which you are already not very good. And on top of that, ESPN released its college football player rankings based on a panel of its writers. One through ten, there is not a single player from not just Oklahoma, but Texas or any other Big 12 school. Trevor Lawrence at 1, Tua Tonga Valoa at 2, Jerry Judy at 3, Grant Delpit at 4, Jake Fromm at 5, Jonathan Taylor at 6, Justin Herbert at 7, Travis Etienne at 8, Chase Young at 9, and Justin Ross at 10. So that's three Clemson players, two Alabama players, and about, I think, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 SEC players. So that's what ESPN thinks of not just OU, but the Big 12. And coming out of a weekend where there was some movement, but not a whole lot. Guys were in shoulder pads and shorts. A couple things, you know, kind of got back to a few of us with phones and text messages where we're just talking to folks. And one of the things that I found interesting was what were they going to do now that they know that Norwood is out? How have they been making up for the most versatile guy? in the defensive backfield, who could play all five positions for Oklahoma. Jordan Parker seems to be moved back to corner, which I think is very cool. Lots of folks are pulling for him. Guy that showed what he could do early on, then had injuries. DeLaren turner Yell making a move at safety as Chance Sylvie might drop down to play a little nickel to bolster Brendan, Buki, Radley Hiles, and Justin Broyles at that position. All three can play three positions, free safety, strong safety, and nickel. There's not really going to be any separation at QB. And an observation that I got to give to a follower on Twitter and YouTube, Tony House, she mentioned that Lincoln has named the starting quarterback on or right around the first day of classes. Right, The first day of classes for Oklahoma is next week. Kyler Murray was a little late. Baker was about right on time. Right, But along with that, Jalen Hurts is the steadiest of the three. Spencer Rattler is the most freshman of the three. And Tanner Mordecai is feeling himself. And he should, because it makes sense. Tanner Mordecai has been in this system longer than any of the other quarterbacks. He's got a full year plus, having just watched Kyler Murray and Austin Kendall do their thing. So that is for the Tanner Mordecai truthers out there that think that he's going to be the guy. I think you're going to see all three. And there's an open question as how many plays you're going to get out of perhaps Tanner Mordecai and Spencer Rattler. And I want to get into that, but I want to stick with just what we learned. And I talked with uh, my buddy Brandon, work over at OU Insider with, and we were both flabbergasted to hear Lincoln Riley give rave reviews for redshirt freshman linebacker Brian Asamoa, which is a demonstration of just how deep that inside linebacker group is. All four of the guys I would feel comfortable with starting for that defense. The four being Kenneth Murray Jr., Levi Draper, Deshaun White, and Brian Mead. But then you got Brian Asamoah, who is apparently coming on. And the way that the breakdown seems to be working is Draper's working at Mike behind Murray. Asamoah is working at Will behind Deshaun White. Brian Mead is going to figure in at both positions, but probably most likely at the Will position depending on just how much you trust Kenneth Murray Jr. And that dude, man, the the, the people that I'm talking to, he could bring OU's linebacking tradition back to a national stage. He's there. Like, he made the leap that I thought he was going to make last year. I've really been out front with how much I like Kenneth Murray Jr. and I like his game, especially after never having played the position, and now that is who he is. That's his identity. His identity is middle linebacker, is Mike, is captain of the defense. So I'm hoping Brian Odom and Alex Grinch can make him better at reading what's going on with the play, at just hitting the run fills, 
at diagnosing plays, being less of a chase tackler and more of a guy that is initiating contact. And if that's the case, you're not only looking at another 150 tackle season, you're looking at perhaps 20, 30 tackles for loss. You're looking at a guy that might have seven to eight sacks from the middle linebacker position, and that would be just awesome. David Ugwebu is making waves out at rush in. Jalen Redman hasn't had any setbacks, and that's a really big deal as I'm still cagey on what he's going to be able to provide, but apparently they feel really good about what he can do, and we all know that he can help you if he's healthy. But watching a true freshman in David Ugwebu push is also interesting because Mark Jackson is still at that position, and you have guys like Joseph Wette who are who is at that position. And you could put Ronnie Perkins on that side if you want to. You can move him over to the strong side defensive end. But you have options there. I think my takeaway from the weekend is that everybody is still healthy outside of Norwood, which is what you want and what you need. You need everybody to get through camp. And they're not through camp yet. You still got a week of camp left before you go through classes and you start to go into your regular practice schedule and you start getting ready for what you have to do with Houston, but at defensive back, is there anything to be excited about? Yes. Trey Brown is the reason you should be excited. The footage was released from OU's football Twitter account of him making a dynamic pick highlight under the lights. Uh, reports are, is I think it's Rattler that threw it, but, you know, cool. It wouldn't hurts. I'd, li- I'd rather that the true freshman make that mistake than the grad transfer make that mistake. And as we continue to talk about Rattler and Mordecai, one being a redshirt freshman, one being a true freshman, one of the criticisms of Spencer Rattler or Tanner Mordecai is, you know, first, Rattler didn't play a whole lot his senior year. Uh, He was ineligible for breaking school violations, right? Talked with his dad. He thought it was stupid action by his kid, but it wasn't the worst thing that his kid had ever done, and he felt good about how it was handled. Still got to OU right on time. Tanner Mordecai also had played big-time football in Texas high school. But the the issue was, can any one of these dudes stand up to the pressure and speed of big-time college football? Which was interesting because that's exactly what Jalen Hurts did as a true freshman. He came in and was the first true freshman starter at quarterback in the Nick Saban era at Alabama. So there's your answer. And... Most of us believe Spencer Rattler is a much more talented quarterback than Jalen Hurts. He's a different quarterback. He's much more Pat Mahomes than Hurts is, right? Hurts, I think, has got more of a skill set of Cam Newton, right? He's going to be able to beat you running and throwing, and he came to Oklahoma to be more of a surgeon. But if Spencer Rattler gives you an advantage against any other team, perhaps you want to play him, which... Also, interesting question. I put this one out in in a column on OU Insiders. How many plays would we see from Spencer Rattler? Would there be a package designed for Spencer Rattler? Kind of like what you saw when Kyler Murray came in in 2017 against Ohio State with the option pitch back to him. I'm thinking no, because that's Kyler Murray's speed, 4-3. Spencer Rattler ain't that dude, and you're going to have to let him get into the flow of the game to be really good, and you just don't do change of pace at the quarterback position unless you absolutely have to. And Lincoln Riley has showed he doesn't want to, and he's never had to. Patrick, I can see a student over there. What you got? Well, a change of pace generally works if if the guy offers you something vastly different, as as you pointed out with Kyler Murray's explosiveness. I wonder this. Do they care about redshirting Spencer Radler? Yeah. Do Do you think he'll be a five-year guy? No. Okay. I think he'll be a four-year guy. Yeah, but so I mean, does a red or, shirt? No, he, maybe even a two-year guy. Okay, I, so, so, that's what I'm saying. So a red shirt generally probably doesn't. He's not going to be there five years. So if you were to not red shirt him this year, if he played in more than four games, it's probably not just a complete detriment. And it would save his red shirt for down the line if he ever needed it. I don't think they plan to do it, but no, I I think, I, I think they do plan to do it. They plan to red shirt him. I think that's 100 mm-hmm. percent the plan yeah. because Lincoln has showed. Every one of the guys that he's had, that he has an opportunity to redshirt, he redshirts. Kyler Murray was transferred. He had to sit out 2016. He was eligible to play in 2017, which is why you were more interested in getting him on the field. Mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield, same difference, right? Yeah. Austin Kendall, redshirted, 
right? Yeah. He was able to go yeah. in 2016 because he had to, and then they redshirted him in 2017. You want to get that guy a year. Tanner Mordecai, same, th- uh, same thing. You want to set him up mm-hmm. to where when he plays for 2020, 2021, yeah. yeah, he can go because you got Brock Vandergriff coming in in 2021. Mm-hmm. 